Hello everyone, this is the Ninja DC in a not react video, this time instead a discussion video on season six thus far and also the future. Joining me today is Unova. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Unova Bruni, and I am here to give you such a spectacular show, Vienna. <laughs> Thank you, cheering section, for that wonderful performance you did there. Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, you have the mic. What? Oh, put me in the line of fire after that awesome after that awesome introduction. Okay, <laughs> now what am now what am I gonna do? <laughs> um you could sing. Come one, come all, come witness the magic of the amazing and powerful Jen! Jeez, that's bad. Trixie, <laughs> <laughs> you are not. The girl, the girl with two princesses in her bubble. And speaking <laughs> of bubbles, look upon me. I am John Willow, the man of a thousand bubbles. Gaze upon them. <laughs> the Watch bubbles. them fly. Watch them pick up random squid people who are abusive towards sponges and starfishes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I should stop this now because I have no yeah. references left. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bubbles! <laughs> Fucking bubbles! <laughs> Tiny oh, bubbles. Thank you, thank you, Nova. <laughs> You're very welcome. You know what's just started a trend here. Now it's now every introduction has to be like epic. Uh, <laughs> I finally <laughs> found my true self. It only took me 21 years, but I finally yeah. accomplished it. You know, I recently turned 21. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to adulthood. Buckle up, Buttercup. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, Life has no seatbelts. Oh, I am ready, nope. Blossom. I hope you're also ready, too, Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one. Good one. Uh, nice. Nice. Life has no seatbelts. Also, where you're going, you don't need roads. <laughs> We're going off the rails on a crazy train. <laughs> Speaking of off the rails. Uh, all right. I guess this form yes. is an awkward enough transition. Um, so, but yeah, the first you know, su subject on? of... Um, Go ahead. I say the first subject of today's video is discussing our thoughts on season six thus far, which is sort of a mix with highs and like sort of mess is a good way to describe it, at least to think of it as a whole. Mm. So what are your all thoughts? Mm. Well, um, honestly, um, even though I've already speak about this subject on another podcast, but it's been a long time apart. So this is going to be fresh thoughts from my 21 year old self. So honestly, <laughs> season six, uh, it's honestly been um for the first half i think the character the two characters who had like the strongest impact from season six would have to be fluttershy and spike of all of all ponies mm -hmm. <laughs> and dragons because uh for one thing we easily had one of the best fluttershy episodes of all time with flutter brother mm. but then on the other hand except for newbie dash which we had a little bit of spike abuse Spike was literally on fire this entire time, from pre from the premiere to his solo episode with Gauntlet of Fire, mm -hmm. him having more ships than you can count now. Finally, people are going away from the Sparity ship, and now moving on to the new territories of Star Spike and also oh, Star Amber. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it has been one glorious time for my favorite character. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that as a Spike fan, I am most pleased with season six, at least on the Spike front. But on every other character's front, I'm going to have to say this. Applejack, she had an average episode, sort of like fitting the quality of season three Applejack. Then we get Pinkie Pie which uh, she had a bit of good episodes with uh, the main hand one with uh, Rarity and Mod Pie, the gift of the Mod Pie, and mm -hmm. also with Spice Up Your Life, uh, again with Rarity, 
Like, I feel like she had a very strong pe- presence character-wise, showing her emotional depth and such. Which, then again, she is my favorite pony, so that is to be expected. Mm-hmm. Rarely, on the other hand, she's been showing a lot of weakness. And I don't mean the weakness of from Spice Up Your Life. No, no, no. That was a good showing of her weakness. What I mean is from the episode Saddle Row Review, which is one of my favorites in the comedic highlights, Rarity was kind of like a non-presence for the opening of her third uh, boutique over at Manhattan. And I got to say, the writers need to find to develop a new, um, a new like a uh, character struggle for her to come up against because uh Honestly, we don't see her like struggling as much anymore for like a uh, developing on like her um storefronts, but we need her to have a new character um uh, a new character issue for her to go through. That's what I believe. <laughs> Maybe trying to get her first date. <laughs> oh, that would be the day for friendship is magic. But last but, uh, but um Next is Rainbow Dash, who's um in the beginning of season six. She has finally accomplished her dream in one of the most controversial <laughs> episodes to date. <laughs> uh, Rainbow just couldn't catch a break with those Wonderbolts. Like, it's been very divisive due to the people arguing for the episode, using the military as a counterpoint while other people have been feeling extremely uncomfortable because the episode kind of brings up a bit of bullying and name-calling aspects that really hit hard at home for those uh, those individuals who don't like that sort of stuff. But last but certainly not least, the two supposed main characters of My Little Pony Season 6, Twilight Sparkle and Starlight Glimmer. For Starlight, since she's now a good guy, she she has decent episodes. I feel like she's kind of like the magical equivalent for Applejack right now in which how her character is. Mm. Maybe not with like the same depth as Applejack, in which like you can infer upon her being like a solitary like leader taking care of her uh, young uh, brother and sister. Oh, I'm sorry, her big brother and sister. But she's just not really that interesting of a character, except for maybe like uh, during No Second Prances, in which uh, she clearly uh, synch- uh, synergized extremely well with the great and powerful Trixie. I quite agree. However, Twilight Sparkle, weakest character of season six, No Second Prances, and even the premiere. She was a hindrance to me. And it just shows that whenever she fixates on her princess title or her reputation, her character just dips for me. And honestly, I just want to divide Twilight to pre-Princess Twilight from season one to season three and Princess Twilight from season four onwards. That, That Twilight, Princess Twilight, is on the bottom of my totem pole, lower than Rainbow Dash. I just can't stand her. Like, she is a bad excuse for a teacher, and I know what they're trying to go for, the writers, but there are better ways to show an incompetent teacher or even a teacher who has inexperience. I mean, aside from the fact that in only season four, she was shown as a very competent teacher to the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Mm. How's them apples? <laughs> and go right, so um, with my piece. All right, before I uh, just move on to whoever almost wants to pick up the torch, I would say I sort of agree at least with the, who has the strongest um, character part, at least with Spike, because he had some of the best like characterization this season period and actually from what I've seen of future preview episodes, possibly even continuing on. Mm. Though I have to disagree with Fluttershy, and I'll get more into that later, but I felt her characterization in Flutterbird was good, but the episodes as a whole wasn't. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's just, uh, who else wants to pick up the torch on their thoughts in season six thus far? <laughs> I'll go yeah. <laughs> since I was thrown since I was thrown in the in the line of fire after the blazing <laughs> hot the blazing hot thing that was Unova. So I'll go. Yeah. So I'll go back in again. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say. <laughs> <sure. laughs> 
ham. Uh, <laughs> Um, I will. I will actually. Um, I agree with everything Unova said. Um, yes. Yes. Um, season six, Gauntlet of Fire. That is the best Spike episode in all the seasons, in my opinion. And I like Spike. Not my favorite, but I like Spike. And this. And this one was just a shining Spike episode for him. And also the the introduction of Princess Ember, which I hope to see. I really hope to see more of, and we get to see more of Equestria with the dragon, with the Dragonlands, and we got to see see a, a different race and how they and how they work, which was really which is really great. And, and a reintroduction of a strong female character is always always good in my opinion. I also liked it that we got to see more styles of male ponies, like we had um, Zephyr Breeze. We we had we had the I guess the cheese sandwich kind of thing the tall lanky male pony with Ze, in with Zephyr but also a very square muzzle style for him oh, yeah. and, and in spice up voice. <laughs> yeah in spice and in spice up your life you had the kind of well short plump plump pony in a coriander and that was something that hadn't been that I, that had not been done that I hadn't seen really a lot of and. I love it, and also spice, and also with spice up your life. It's it's like an an East Indian restaurant in a in Canterlot. Wow, they really went they really went in an interesting kind of direction. Um, but yes, like Gone with the Fire was a was fantastic best Spike episode. I have to best Fluttershy one. Yes, uh, Flutter Brother. That's actually uh, one that I actually don't mind going back to. Another thing is is there seems to be an overarching theme of this epi of the this part of the season and that's maturity. The biggest example, the biggest example of all, not just spot, but what is also the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Um, the fact that on your marks was the Cutie Mark Crusaders. It was a, this was a really interesting point. This interesting point in the development of their characters, like they know who they are together now that they've got their Cutie Marks who what else can they what else can they do and now and also now it was a great point that was brought up in in on your mark was like you know now we don't have to do things anymore to get our cute marks we can just do them to enjoy them now it's a very freeing kind of experience for the for the cute mark crusaders to grow um so that's that, that was a great episode a great cmc episode for them as as well as the episode for when they got their their marks as well, um, but yeah, definitely this this the overall theme seems to be about seems to be about maturity. You see the Cutie Mark Crusaders kind of mature into like okay, what we're going to do with our marks. You see Spike mature in which he's been he's been given some big tasks and he actually accomplishes them, and then you have Fluttershy in Flutter Brother, and she's actually kind of standing kind of standing up to her own brother, but in her but still in her own way that is not. That is not out of out of uh, out of character. In the past, for more comic relief, she could have gone well, Flutter Hulk, or or the uh, <laughs> "You're going to love me" thing in the season one. But no, she but no, she kept to her, stayed true to her guns, and I would have loved um, to see her go Flutter Hulk against her brother. <laughs> me too. I was waiting. I was waiting for that. I was waiting. It's like, oh boy, is she gonna is she gonna lose it? Is she gonna lose it? Like. No, she's not gonna lose it. Okay, fine. You will but like she... me when I'm peeved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real happy. You don't like predictions, me when I'm um, peeved. prediction things. I really do hope she has either a flutter bat or a flutter Hulk like rage moment. It's like I really hope that does happen sometime later in this season at some point because it's been so it's been so long. Yeah, I pointed, I have to agree. The tooth thing from that flutter bat episode seems to be a bit of a a tease now, doesn't it? <laughs> but I guess the whole thing the whole thing is about there's an overarching theme of maturity here and um I don't know if anyone else feels it too but some of the episodes seemed like really really like filler in a way they had some of them had that really yeah. filler feel mm -hmm. about it I guess yeah. I guess with um when you know brought up those things about Applejack and Twilight and Rarity being not so not the strongest of characters those were the episodes that felt like the most filler, except, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah, the, the ones that felt like the most filler, I think. You know, Though I, I think the, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, yeah. 
uh, you know, I, you know, I think I, I just, I was going to repeat myself absolutely. So I'm going to stop there and that's, oh, that's, right. that's my, that's my thing. So <laughs> I'm done. Your turn. Well, I just want to build upon your thoughts on the overarching theme. I mean, I was a little confused by it at first because, you know, in, in other series we've seen uh, deathly. <laughs> Sorry, I know he's going to throw me off. Uh, well, anyway, I didn't really understand what was going on until I heard this uh, Dr. Wolf review. And he talked about how all the episodes seem to be focusing on the development of relationships. And I looked back mm. upon him and I thought, yeah, he's right. You know, like there's new friendships uh repairing relationships between brothers and sisters fathers and daughters you know mm -hmm. it, it all seemed to be focused on that and and yeah i i like that i guess uh maybe i'd like to see a little mixed up uh a little broken up but i am looking forward to the next part of the season um god what else was i gonna say i, I guess everything's really been said but uh, in terms of strongest and weakest characters, I'd have to say one of my least favorite characters of this season has been Apple Bloom, simply because I I feel like in every episode that we've seen her in, it's just always been like her freaking out about her destiny. Um, I would I would love to see some sort of you know different approach to her rather than just a a freak out episode because it's all getting a little tiresome. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of agree with some episodes being sort of filler. Uh, which which ones do you feel have been most filler? Um, the most filler, I the most fillery, I think, <laughs> really foolery. Uh, the most uh, the one that felt the most like filler was Applejack's Day Off. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That felt like that felt like yeah. just filler right there. I did I did kind of like the uh well some some aspects of the episode like when they were uh tracing the source of the problem mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i do kind of agree it was a little unnecessary uh what else can i say <laughs> eh, i'm struggling for thought applejack's day off fell felt like it was almost i don't want to say painful but it was almost like I was watching Apple Buck season again. Yeah. It's pretty mm -hmm. much, I mean, Apple, Applejack, um, um, Rarity summed it up best when she's like, oh, she's too stubborn to relax. And I'm yeah. thinking like, well, if you knew that, why did you even, <laughs> why did you even bring Applejack to the freaking spa in the first place? I know. But, um, but I did, I did like it. At, at first I was thinking, oh no, I'm going to, Verdi's gonna try and bring Applejack to the spa, and she's gonna think it's all hoity toity and everything. She's gonna not gonna <laughs> like it, and it's gonna be it's gonna be painful to watch. But she was like, "I want to steam." Like, okay, mm -hmm. good. So, so she's not exactly too close minded to it. Um, one saving grace of the episode was finding out that Rainbow Dash <laughs> really does really does like hoofa cures. You know, <laughs> it might have been it might have been that kind was of kind of funny. funny. It might be kind of a funny concept. But we saw it from that side, like Rarity trying to introduce Rainbow Dash into the spa side of things. You know, right. I remember yeah. the episode when she was like, "You must have a hoof cure, darling. It's divine." She's like, "I don't like ponies touching my hooves." Oh yeah. <laughs> and then here she is again, and here she is again with a. Uh, she's like, "Yeah, can you put me down for the whole package?" Like, <laughs> oh well. Yeah. I know she shouldn't be so open about it. She should have a scarf around her head and sunglasses. And even like put on a different voice, <laughs> which I think seen. she should be open. Wait, 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 wait. Are you suggesting to her to copy off of her flawed mentor, Wind Rider? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I think she should be open. I think she should be open with it. Who says an an athletic an athletic woman can't like to be pampered once in a while? <laughs> I think the last thing I want to say is I do kind of agree with you, Nova, that Starlight Glimmer has been very, I want to say, boring up to now. Because I I know I should like this character, uh, but I just don't feel like she's had any shining moments. I I feel like all the kind of uh, interesting parts for her got kind of sucked out after she became good. And yeah, you could argue that 
she has a she has the Christmas episode, but in the end, that that wasn't meant to be her. That was meant to be Snowfall Frost, something completely different. And I never really saw the point in that episode as a as a life lesson, you know, because it just kind of seemed like an excuse for them to do a Christmas Carol, even though I really loved that episode. I think that was more like a let's show heartwarming Eve from a different, from another, yet another angle. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I just, I want to see more from her. I want to see how she interacts with the, uh, the people from her old town, maybe even get a mm -hmm. few more moments with uh, Sunburst, that kind of thing. Um, and that's really all I can say for the moment. <laughs> mm hmm I think uh, yeah. I definitely I definitely think that Star Starlight is definitely she's kind of lost some of that. Uh, um, she's definitely been some of the one of the weaker, I guess, n n underdeveloped characters now that she's good. Um, yeah. She hasn't. And I agree. She has not had that many shining moments. But I think her. But, mm -hmm. but I think she's just starting. This is she's just starting. There's there's got to She's a developing character. So there's going to be a little bit of a lull in the beginning. Maybe it will pick up. Um, in later, in later episodes, and Twilight, and Twilight, you got to remember she's a young, she's a young alco young <laughs> alicorn, so she's still bound to make mistakes. This is more, and I think it's a good thing, a, a good thing for her to that she's weak. It shows it's taking her down, it's t it's taking her down a notch, definitely because in the beginning she was pretty haughty and everything well not with her powers but in the, before she got became princess she was pretty you know like yeah i know i'm the smartest pony in the room i know everything and such so all of this is like showing is has been yet another thing of, of, of kind of changing her attitude and um just changing her way of think of thinking that you know maybe she doesn't she doesn't have the answers and um she doesn't have all the she doesn't have all the answers pretty much and that she has to either trust uh somebody else to find them on their own or she's got to dig a little deeper <laughs> sorry i just got it uh, you gotta dig a little deeper <laughs> <laughs> yeah. find out what you need i guess oh, with, yeah. every, with every oh, yeah, no. with every episode there seems to be i don't know that cynic consignment wants to say like why didn't she do this why didn't she do that yeah like, that, for the Trixie episode, I felt like, why didn't Star <laughs> go back to her old town and pick one of the people she already knew to come to oh, the yeah. Celestia dinner? True. Why, Fair. why did she have to pick Trixie? Cause one, cause there were a bunch of tricks, cause there were a bunch of Trixie fans in the fan, and we're like, how can we get the Trixie fans back? Let's bring <laughs> yeah. her back again. <laughs> well, honestly, as a Trixie fan myself, I would have to say, <laughs> like, oh. oh. Oh, what? What was that, Jen? <laughs> I said, ah, there's one among us right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't help it. She's the performer. Hey, it's 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 cool. I'm not I'm not hating. I'm not hating. Just just us just, just stating a fact of like, ah, there's one among us right now. <laughs> but um, yep. Just to get my phone, like throw my own thoughts before we move on to what we future things we know about the season from Comic-Con. Um, I feel this is a very unbalanced season is sort of a good way to describe it because several characters get like a lot of episodes and also a lot of development. While other characters just sort of get a lot of filler, it seems a good way because it, there are seems to be a lot of, like Jen said, filler episodes mixed in with uh, the good stuff. Like um, I think we can all agree that like one of the best episodes of the season was um, um, Gosh, I can't remember the Spike and Ember episode is like uh, Gone, 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 Gone on Fire. Gone on Fire, Gone on Fire yeah. is like one of the best episodes because it developed Spike and sort of developed the world. Then we have other episodes like the CMC episode felt extremely like filler, even though like it's the first episode after they yeah. got their key. Mm -hmm. I think we'd have something a little bigger sure. than that. And then my, also there's balance of also characters. Some characters are getting a lot more attention, at least in the first, like a lot more attention this season than other ones. Like, for example, I'm a Fluttershy fan. I don't think she might not get another episode this whole season. But sort of terror. I'll get more than that later, but sort of ter like disappoints and terrifies me. But at the same time, Rarity got a whole bunch of episodes the first half of the season. So did Starlight. Rainbow's getting like 
four episodes almost back to back with her being either the main character or a main focus of them. Mm-hmm. And it just sort of feels very unbalanced compared to like say season one or two where like it, every character is all the characters had about the same amount of episodes, about the same amount of focus. Just um, here it just feels very disproportionate. It basically seems whoever the writers think they can give the most or better suited to or something like that. Um, which just sort of feels odd because like AJ, Fluttershy, and to a lesser degree, Pinkie Pie have really not gotten that many episodes of that much focus. Twilight, though not getting a lot of direct focus, at least got a lot of focus through Starlight because it's basically her student sort of thing. But like those three, AJ, um, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie really have not gotten that much attention this season and it doesn't seem like they're going to get significantly more later in the season. Um, but yeah, moving on to the later part of the season, here's we didn't really get much details of Comic Con this year, no like spoilery um animatic, mostly because it seems like all the episodes are actually done this time. Um, and they're actually starting up next week. But here's a, some of the specifics we have learned. Um, just focusing on season six, we might mention briefly Question Girl's next film. But um, for season six, we've learned that Josh Haber wrote the season finale. Again. Twilight is going to Wonder Ball Academy. A rarity episode with various points of view is coming. Though that might have been Saddle Road View, but I think there's another episode that might be as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Pony Zombies, which, um, yeah, we pretty much know what episode that's going to be. Um, Spike gets his own song in the Changeling episode. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Cheese sandwich is possible for a return, but not confirmed. Oh, more I hope so. Mark, more Cutie Mark Crusader episodes are on the way. That was sort of a no-duh. Um, no Power Ponies episodes planned this season, but anything's possible. They're not happening. Yeah. Um, Princess yeah. Celestia episode is a big maybe from Megan. Ooh, I feel ooh, ooh, um, ooh. They wouldn't... Dragon. They would love to invite William Shatner onto the show. Again, that's nothing really developing this season. So like Glimmer will need to earn her throne in Twilight's castle, which possibly going to happen in the season finale. Um, more Rainbow Dash solo songs coming up. Nice. But then again, given all the number of episodes she has coming up, is sort of expected. Um, and another maybe if sun- sun- sh- Sunset Shimmer will return to Equestria. And then continue wow. on. Then continuing on with the information, here's the episode, upcoming episode titles. Okay. Um, Stranger Than Fan Fiction, which is the episode where Rainbow Dash goes to the Daring Do convention in Manhattan. Nice. Nice. Actually, another, another Manhattan episode. I just realized that. <laughs> oh, my um, God. Nice. The cart before the ponies where the Q-Mark Crusaders get – it's a it's the Applewood um, cart derby. We've seen some previews for um, where the main uh, – AJ, Rarity, and Rainbow Dash help the CMC with the race, but sort of get over-enthusiastic and sort of take over. Um, 28 Pranks Later, which took me too long to get what I was referencing. Um, the Times are a Changeling, which is the Changeling episode I sort of hinted at already with Spike. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> then there's Dungeons and Discords, which is a Discord <laughs> D&D-themed episode. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh you should probably um. Uh, is it okay for me to mention the other two characters that's going to be a focus in that one? Yeah, um, uh, Spike and like he's going to be trolling Spike and um Big, Big Mac. Mac. <laughs> um, Let's and then the next right note, out. Then the next episode is Buckball season, which we pretty much know nothing except for it's probably based on baseball, mm-hmm. and also through some image links I just found that uh Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy at least make a speaking appearance um, because there's an animatic that has both of them in it for the episode, so they're at least making a speaking appearance. That's mm-hmm. all the other info I know in that episode. Um, the fall over Cutie Marks is... Um, yeah, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Viva Las Pegasus is another episode. Every little thing she does. Pony POV or the Apple Lies top bolt and to where and back again will be the season finale. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
all sound but, um, I guess we can sort of start with discussions, but I just want to toss my few cents and uh, where I think so episode focuses will be. Mm-hmm. Um, we all sort of, I already described uh, synopsi for the ones who actually do know for certain. But the, the only one I sort of skipped was uh, 28 Pranks Later, which basically is the one where Rainbow Dash does too many pranks, so they everyone pulls a prank on her, which faking zombies. Um, which I got took me a while to get a 28 day re- later reference. Um, oh God, that took me oh. forever. To, I was like, <laughs> pick that up. Um, then the times are Chainsling, which are where Spike apparently seems to be befriending a Chainsling in a Crystal Empire. Um, mm-hmm. Remember, I said what the I think we were talking about earlier in the chat where that was uh, previewing him. Um, Let's see, where was like a sort of only spoiler detail? That was it. Um, and then the fall of our cutie marks, which, oh, I, I skipped um, Dungeons and Discords, which is the basically D&D themed episode with Discord and <laughs> Big Mac and Spike. Sweet. But, um, going from these, like, and also I forgot the cart and ponies. Um, Stranger Than Fiction is an obvious Rainbow Dash episode. Um the cart ponies before is a Rainbow Dash in their Big Sisters episode. I mean, not Rainbow Dash, a CMC in their Big Sisters episode sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so another CMC episode, I think it's focused with a lot of other. 28 Pranks Later, I is sort. I think it's a, I can't tell if it's a Rainbow Dash focused episode or just one where like it's sort of like uh, all the main six episode with sort of like see um, uh, Mysterious Madeware. So it's like, all the main six are sort of co in the episode where they're just sort of pranking Rainbow Dash sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, either way, Rainbow Dash is sort of the focus of the episode with others. Times Are Changing is a Spike episode, it seems like. Um, Dungeon to Discord mm-hmm. is a Spike um, Discord and Big Mac episode. Yeah. Buckball season. Again, I didn't really think about this because I just found there, like two images of it. Um, I just realized I think this might be the Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy map episode. Um, because I, I wasn't even I knew about I just learned about this right when I was making uh, up this. Then I'm gonna ex- guess it's probably between a coach and his best star player. <laughs> possibly, um, because we don't know anything. Here's a I just image link I'll try to share in the chat. Because I just learned, I was thinking about this because I, I just thought I was like, oh, I know they're in it, but then I was like, wait a second, those two haven't done a map episode. Oh, this is probably their map episode. Um, images in the chat, that's pretty much all we know about the episode, <laughs> which ain't much. <laughs> um, then the fall of Keating Marks, most likely uh, another CMC episode, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Viva La Pegasus, I have a feeling it'll be a Pinkie Pie episode, this is, but there's no nothing at all on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just, I'm assuming Pinkie Pie because Pinkie Pie and like either Hollywood or Vegas, either one, whichever one they try to depict as Las Pegasus. Um, either one, Pinkie Pie seems to be like a perfect suit for that. Yeah. Um, and then here's the thing with the. Um, Sorry, with I, was, the, I was just going to make a comment. Like maybe they'll uh, have the whole uh, do some sort of parody about Dashcon. <laughs> uh, you mean Unicon? Yeah. Oh, I think they're talking about just lost. Pe- I think they're talking about just lost Pegasus itself. Unicorn, I don't think, have has anything to do with it. I know. It was. Yeah. It was... I mean, like, even so, who wants to remember that horrible tragedy? I don't think any. I don't think anyone does. Seriously. I know. No, I just thought maybe they would reference <clears throat> it. Nah. Sorry. Um. And then uh, every little thing she does, which. We don't have any of things, but like I, this is sort of my best idea of a possible Celestia episode. Um, Every little because, thing yeah, she does. Yeah, just because I think they said there's a big maybe about Celestia episode. Oh, um, like the song. Every little thing she does is magic. Okay. Yeah, like something oh. that might be her episode. It could also like. For all we know, it's, it could be a Discord and Flourish High episode, which I actually would hope for because I've been waiting for that since season three. Um, I don't count like the one with uh, keep make new friends because that that was a completely Discord episode. Mm-hmm. Um, then Pony POV, which I had no idea at first, but then I was looking back, it was like the rarity episode from other points of view, 
originally I thought that was just in the, like them forgetting and getting out of order the Saddle Row Review because that was sort of a rarity episode from different perspectives. However, it's literally called Pony Point of View, so I think this might be another rarity episode. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, it kind of sounds like there might be, well, from the title alone, I'm guessing maybe it's another, uh, you know, like the 100th episode, uh, like having it from different ponies' point of views. Well, that's what I was saying. Is like they said there was supposed to be a rarity episode with from different perspectives of different points of view. Ah, okay. So I was thinking that that would probably might be the best fit for that. Um, and then the next episode is Where the Apple Lies, which will most likely be AJ's second episode. I just more or less guarantee that. Um, and then the next one will be Top Bolt, which if you're going by er my earlier thing I brought up with um, Pinkie Pie and Flourish Eye's um, map episode, mm -hmm. I think this could be Rainbow Dash's and uh, Twilight's map episode because – Remember how they said that uh, Twilight is actually going to go to the Wonder Bolts Academy? So this could be Top Bolt where she's going there with Rainbow Dash to fix something or something like that. Um, but like that's just going by like the early prediction with the Pinkie Pie and Flourish Eyes map episode being Buckball season. This would round out the main six. Um, and then the last two are to wear him back again. Which... Uh, Maybe the possible return of sunlight. I don't know. Okay, I was rambling on for all. I was just trying to go to basic what theories of episodes. Sunlight? You mean starlight? Uh, no, Sorry, sunlight uh, shimmer. Sunset. sunset. Oh, sunset. Wow. Yeah, sunset. <laughs> Not sunset. Sunset. <laughs> oh, God. Why? There's too many four names. I know. <laughs> Not to my little pony. Why did you have to make the characters have similar magical prowess have the exact similaration? <laughs> <laughs> too many um, words. So what are all some of your theories or thoughts from like what the series seems to be going for the next rest of the season. Ooh, I definitely have some ideas for uh, times are changeling. I honestly believe that this might be an episode that might actually give the crystal empire some much needed character because seriously, that place has been a dead zone for any sort of interactions. The crystal ponies could have had, and it could even give characterization to cadence. And Shining Armor! Well, even though Shining Armor recently got characterization from the premiere, but Cadence needs it! Well, we, have, you seen the, have you seen the trailer to the next half? Oh, I've already seen that! That's, right. that's, that's, why, that's why I'm feeling like the Crystal Empire is going to get a bit more characterization thanks to this. Yeah. Especially considering Cadence's history. It could even be that Chaos could be a bit uh, biased against Chaseline since, you know, wedding troubles. <laughs> Oh, uh, so we're going to have a very negative side that Cadence we could possibly have. And it's just going to be so good because then I'm not going to I might going to actually like her more if she's unlikable. Because seriously, I am so sick and tired of her being so uh, positive, so nonchalant to changes such as Three's a Crowd, which was wasted potential. Yeah, I guess uh. I don't I don't want it to be one of those episodes where it's just like they all they all think he's a nice guy and then suddenly he decides to suck up all the baby's love, you know. <laughs> oh my to, god. Send it back to the queen or something like that. <laughs> okay, and then and then all of a sudden everyone would cheer because the baby would be in a near death state. Mm -hmm. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm a oh sorry, go ahead. Near death is kind of a stretch. I'd say more like dazed and confused. Hmm. I see. You know, you know, from what I've seen from uh, the wedding episode. <laughs> anyway, Jennifer. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess um, one of the things, one, also one thing that I wanted to mention is like, what the heck are they gonna do with the uh, the future, the future overlord of Equestria? Oh, I mean Flurry Heart. <laughs> Whoops! I mean Flurry Heart. Oops! I mean. <laughs> future future overlord of Equestria. <laughs> future overlord. Maybe change her name first. 
was like, how can a, well, like, how can a future overlord of Equestria be named Flurryheart? Like, take us to your leader. Like, we will take you to our queen, Flurryheart. What? <laughs> <laughs> queen Flurry. That sounds like an ice cream dessert. <laughs> I was about to say that. This sounds like something you could get out of KFC for Valentine's Day. I know, Day. Or, or Dairy Queen, or Dairy Queen. Like, yeah, I'd like a Queen Flurry with fudge on the inside. <laughs> hey, Vegeta, I'm going to Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah, all right, Napa. Go get yourself a, a Queen Flurry. Okay, Vegeta. Yay. <laughs> That should so be a thing now. But yeah, what in the world are they going to do with... I have a sneaking suspicion that <laughs> Flurry Heart may be... I mean, she's in the opening. I, I'm i wondering if... She, I think she will be in the finale, but in the finale. I don't, I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But um, I, I would hope we'll get one more, like, one more, I guess, look or something of her before the season ends. It be kind. Of, it would kind of suck if she would. If she was just a one shot, one season shot character. What Flurry Heart? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when we know, like the times are changing. They're traveling to the Crystal Empire uh, for a changeling threat. Well, uh, before Spike does befriending of changeling shenanigans happen. So I'm thinking she'll at least make an appearance within that episode and probably right. be a slight focus. Yeah. Um, probably the they can like that. It'll, it'll probably. I mean, I'm guessing that it'll probably start off with Spike uh, being praised for being the, I don't know, <laughs> the having having some connection with saving the Crystal Empire. Then suddenly the Changeling will come in. Uh, the Changeling will save his life. He'll say that he's a friend and everybody will distrust him or something for a little bit. But then, yeah, something in the end will happen and things will be right as rain again. Yeah. I gotcha. I, I wonder. Like I just had this vision of like flurry hard, like coming up on a changeling and a chick coming up on a changeling, and and like I don't know, she's trying to play, like she's like like looking at him, and then all of a sudden, bzz, she saps him. Yeah. Oh God! Then that was a sudden international incident, and then Flurry Heart is the true villain of season six, which makes her the most disappointing one. <laughs> thus, I, thus I said, future Overlord of Equestria, and she yeah. will be grounded for the next for the next few decades of her alicorn because of this international incident. Why would she be grounded in the beginning? Because she because she brought about nearly a near eternal winter for the <laughs> Crystal Empire. Oh, wait a minute. I bet Shining Armor and Cadence are like, you can't ground a baby. It's like, you, well, well, you can't, well, of course, you can't ground a supercharged, powerful baby. Alicorn. Off her wings. <laughs> Ooh. That got dark real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to make a. I love making certain assumptions about these episodes based on other shows that I've seen. Um, the one you were mentioning about, like, the Q-Mark Crusaders getting their mm -hmm. ideas, you know, mm -hmm. what was it, the boxcar episode? It kind of um, yeah, it kind of reminds yeah. me of a recent uh, plot of a uh, Bob's Burgers episode where, yeah. you know, they couldn't really decide who was going to race in this boxcar derby. <laughs> so, yeah, my best, my best bet is it's going to be something similar to that, but in the pony style, of course. And then the dungeons and dragons episode that just reminds me so much of this plot of uh you know uh ninja turtles episode of recent years where they all start dressing up and this one magician starts uh turning their fantasy into reality and that's exactly mm -hmm. what i think's gonna happen discord's gonna come along and say hey you know what would be fun if i use some magic you know and <laughs> never gonna get some great visuals some great like gags, maybe some references to the to the movie. Was there a movie of Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, oh, there was a live act. There was a live action one. Yeah, like maybe a reference to. I don't know who who was that guy who was in the main role. Okay. Uh, no, no, mem no memory whatsoever. I have no idea. Was it Dungeons and Dragons or was it? Never mind. But that's that's mm -hmm. my thoughts on it. I just can't wait for that episode. I think it's going to be phenomenal. 
Nice. But um, yeah, I think I brought like this sort of brings up like I sort of concerns because I um I think I brought this up earlier. My concerns about unbalance of this uh, season, mm-hmm. and this is sort of where you can see like even more weird focus on rarity and um rainbow dash where they get like they both seem to be going about four or five episodes um and then also my concern with uh i really don't believe we'll get another dedicated flourish high episode besides Mm -hmm. maybe a map episode which this is the second season in a row that it's happened which is infuriating somewhat i gotcha i gotcha because um, we, it looks like I guarantee Viva Las Vegas is, is a Pinkie Pie episode, so she at least gets another new episode dedicated more towards her. Mm-hmm. Um, because that, Viva Las it does it screams party, and party and Pinky come on. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. And the Pony POV seems like another rarity episode, going from the information about different points of view in a rarity episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Unless that was Saddle Row Review. But again, that's another rarity episode later in the season after she said a whole bunch. Yeah. And and then Rainbow Dash already has a whole bunch lined up. And then Top Bolt will be a will be a Rainbow Dash most likely in um Twilight episode. Um and then the finale would most likely involve Twilight and Sunset. I mean not Sunset, Star uh Starlight. So really, like the only possibility I even see is a dedicated flourish episode, and also, oh yeah, and obviously where the apple lies is, it's pretty much even more written on than Viva La Pin, uh, Viva Las Vegas is. It's like that's an obvious um, where the apple lies is a AG episode. That's it seems like red flashing neon lights. That's that's going to be an AG episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so the only really possibility I can see of a dedicated flourish episode is. Every little thing she does. Ooh. You know. And the thing is, this could in its place be a Celestia episode, but someone would be like, yay, Celestia episode. I'll be like, no, no give a Fluttershy episode. Oh. Yeah. oh. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of interesting to me that they purposely called the last two episodes like to wear and back again. That's sort of like obviously referencing The Hobbit. Mm. So. Yeah. Um, to me, this is actually my more positive things. I think this is where Sunset will actually be coming back. Um, that, or maybe, I don't know, Star Swirl the Bearded, perhaps? Maybe possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of something's going to happen. Um, and I think it's, it's something that's mostly going to focus on Starlight, um, Twilight, Sunset, and um, those, not really the main six, but those who will get the bigger focus. Um and also going off of this is the – so if I didn't really bring this up too much – is the upcoming Equestria Girls film, mm-hmm. um, which will be coming out about mid-season mid, – well, mid-second mid, uh, mid second half of the season. Um, but like a big thing – from what I understand, the big focus of that will also be like that sort of dropped plot from the last one where Sunset's um, starting to get, like, homesick. Mm-hmm. 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 Which is actually, if like anyone who's not aware who's listening to this or who will be listening to this, is actually in the deleted scenes um, from the previous film. There's mm-hmm. actually a big focus on that, which now seems to be the focus of this film. So I'm wondering, yeah. is like if the end of that film will sort of set up Star uh, um, Sunset Shimmer at least appearing in the season finale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of glad they dropped it from the last film because I think it kind of would have been like the the alternate ending to Titanic. Just would have taking you completely out of the movie in a way that this couldn't repair itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Just uh, the the delete scenes that you do see, they're just not very well written. I think they definitely needed a bit more focus uh, that you probably will get from this movie uh, if they do decide to go that route. Huh. Huh. But yeah, that's another reaction for another day, October. Luckily on Netflix, so it's a lot easier for us all actually to organize a live reaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just uh, just like all of us together once again to react to an Equestria Girls movie. Woohoo, oh, sweet. Yeah. Oh man. And I won't be drunk this time, I promise. 
<laughs> hey, hey, you can be drunk. We all can be drunk. That's drink. <laughs> Woo! Technically, that's true now. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe there should be like an extra an equestrian girls like a uh, drinking game. Take a shot each time they don't show any characterization from the main six, except for Twilight and Sunset. Mm. That would probably, that'd probably be lethal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. so. From what, because what, from what I've seen is like it's even in the synopsis that this episode, this one seems to be very focused on um, uh, Cy Twy and Sunset. Um <laughs> Because like they're the only two that actually get their name dropped, besides the rest of the main, like the, uh, individually get their name dropped from the synopsis. So it's like, yeah, I have a feeling they're going to be heavily the focus. Just a theory. <laughs> uh, all you shippers, get ready. Apparently, apparently in this one, their magic, well, the magic they seem to be experiencing takes on a completely different form, or something. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it seems to be more like sort of natural superpowers that are all individualized. Uh, um, it's a really, it's a really recurring theme with these movies, if you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. the uh, magical substances, you know, and uh, enemies, blah blah blah. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to make a point there. Yeah, got lost. <laughs> I gotcha. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I hate to be sort of down, but that just me as a Fluttershy fan is like, like it's just like waiting patiently for the new like a uh, dedicated, dedicated Fluttershy episode. It's just like for the second season in a row, if it ends up being um one dedicated Fluttershy episode, and then that map episode has it split with another character, it just feels disappointing. Is just such a good term for it. <laughs> um. <laughs> You will not take any of my screen time. Yeah, like my mate, like just my ongoing joke is that Flourishy is the new uh, background pony of the main six. Um, we know the oh, joke no. with AJ. You know the joke with AJ from season one through um. Three. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. best background pony. Mm-hmm. I never really that. Just because she got so few like folk like individual episodes or something like that. But part of that really was just because, like, a lot of her episodes were more Apple Family episodes. But it, it would be not really fair if she got Applejack episodes and Apple Family episodes. Ah, uh, right. Like, I mean, that's just the way I look at it. Because if that's how I think the general complaint is. Because it's sort of like that's how she gets a lot of her episodes, at least in seasons one and two. Mm-hmm. Apple After Apple Bucking season. All right. <laughs> I just random theory. But yeah, I really hope I'm wrong. Like I really, like I said I would love for um, where uh, not where uh, every little thing she does is actually a Fluttershy episode because I feel like that, that would be a fun title for episode Fluttershy episode. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if it involved like Discord and like their actual friendship, which still has not really been explored within the main show proper. <laughs> um. Uh, just, I mean, I I liked uh, make keep new friends and keep Discord, but that was such a Discord focused episode. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I'm just ranting off my own little rant right now, but uh, I'll, I'll fully admit that. But like, it's just one of those things. Is like the comics have done it so well with like their friendship. It's just like. It's like that's one thing is I hate to say it was like the comics have been better than the show since like season three. Mm-hmm. I've been really um, loved, uh, in a while. I'm not so sure about that uh, res- uh, sentiment from my perspective, but uh, oh, I, mean, I won't say there's not down points in the comics. I would definitely say there are low points in the comics, but there's the high points in general seem better. No, oh, I- uh, because they they feel like they're taking more risk with the comics than the show, which is. Mostly playing it safe and also giving a very big Twilight focus. Yeah, I mean, there's there's one particular artist uh, in the comics. I probably mentioned her before, but yeah, whenever whenever I see a comic uh, done by her, it, I usually know that's going to be the weakest story to me. Uh, 
don't know. Silence. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just going off because I didn't like I was literally like this deciphering that my head there's like, oh wait, this means there really is no like flourish episode like right when I was reading down the list like with the live react just because I was like I was putting piecing it all together because like I didn't think of buck balls because I just seen an image literally <laughs> 10 minutes like maybe 15 minutes before the podcast where I had flourish eye and pinkie pie it's like oh yeah there's in the episode that's not much I was like wait a second oh that would match up for the uh um, dual, that would match up for a map episodes for Top Bolt being Rainbow Dash and Twilight, and this one being Pinkie Pie and Flourish Eye. <laughs> I was like, oh crud, <laughs> this this matches up for everything. Where like, the only free episode, Roy, it seems like, is every little thing she does, and I have a feeling that will be the Celestia episode that everyone's been like, like begging for since season one. Right. It will, like I said, it will make everyone else, I think, but me happy. It might even make me happy, but like it's just at the same time. It's like, why couldn't Rarity get one less episode and Flourish I get another episode? Well, if that's the case, there's always season seven. True. In there's, theory, we don't know we have it confirmed yet. I mean, I mean, Spike is basically the main focus for like season six, essentially, with like some the with some like the proposed. Uh, best quality ideas involving around him. So maybe well, I, think, I could have that similar treatment. Well, I think the big thing with Spike episode, they're actually doing stuff with him that is significant because the biggest problem is Spike be- besides um, pretty much for the most of his episodes before the season is they give him basically filler episodes where like, mm. he, it's just like slice of life episode where like Spike is screwing something up. And that's the theme of the episode. That's like nine and 10 Spike episodes. That's what basically the, most of it is and this one and like this season they're actually developing his character with interesting new areas and other characters to interact with and friends so it's like mm-hmm. they're actually treating him like a main six member now yay, yay! just when they just added a main seven member which now we can consider them the spike yay, yay! oh that's actually would be a funny picture like um everyone being it's like main seven and then our new spike and it just says like sunset looking not happy and then, no, 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 basically, like, basically, the picture is like, main, we have ourselves a new member for the main seven, Spike! But then Sunset and Starlight are in the corner, like, reaping, while Sunset's the one comforting Starlight, like, don't worry, you'll get your chance. I mean, look at the movies. They basically made me one of the most popular characters in the entire series now. So sure. oh, that is actually the one thing that would make me happy, because I, re- like I said, even though I'm bummed out that Flourish Eye is getting shafted again a second season in a row, like, sort of three seasons in a row. I really hope, like, I'll be so much happy if Sunset actually makes it because she's such a good character. Agreed. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, just living her just to the question girl. So I was like, because she is one of the best, like, I hate this. I keep saying Starlight is, like, Sunset Light, but she really is, like, Sunset Light. She is just, like, like a substitute because, like, we can't really, it was like, let's keep them separate. So let's hear a, here's a substitute sunlight, Sunset. It's just, like, and that's what part of the problem is like everyone sort of uh, she's sort of playing the same archetype where she's like reformed villainish character, mm-hmm. but Sunset did it so much better and just like the film it's like I feel, uh, I mean I, she could still be mostly in the Question Girl universe or something like that, but um, that actually would be, I don't know how they would handle because like they could is it are they going to have it like she if it, she does come back. Will she just be like a guest appearance for like the finale, something like that? Or will it be like she in season seven, she's actually another member of the main six where she's wow. because because what's she going to do in the Equestria Girls universe for like after she graduates or something like that? It's like, um, it's like, what's your life plans? You sort of grew up in Equestria and our master magic is so like, is she eventually just going to return or something like that? Or I, I still wonder where the heck she lives and how she actually makes money. Oh shoot! Oh. Uh, may- maybe she could do like some sort of like a summer vacation over in Equestria, Balin. But um, <laughs> actually, like speaking of that, like there's a f- I always wanted to make a funny comic explain how she gets her money, uh, mm-hmm. how she doesn't seem to work or anything like that. My joke is like she just had some pocket change she brought over from Equestria, you know, a pocket change, a few dozen gold coins and some ju- rubies and such. 
Um, Which once you get to is like enough to get our own house and all that. Yeah. Right. Oh, like, oh no. yeah. I brought some pocket chains. It's, it's like, how much can you get with this? It's like, um, do you want this house or this house? It's like, oh. <laughs> that's well, like a comic. Oh, go um, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's sorry, just a funny ahead. little comic I just wanted to always have like made. Is this like, where Sons is like, how does she get her money? This expense is like, oh, yeah, I brought some pocket chains from Equestria with me. Maybe it'll give oh, me yeah. a, over a day or so. And this like a whole bag full of gold coins and rubies and sapphires. This is like, and he's, yeah. and he's running around. It's like, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm independent. I'm socially secure. I'm rich. I'm rich. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that was that was always my my biggest beef with the Equestria Girls movies. Like, there was so many opportunities just to kind of explain a couple of things. Like, you know, especially around Sunset. Like, when when she brought out that dusty old book for you know contacting Celestia, it made me wonder: is this how she knew about Twilight and the castle? And then it's like, no, that that wasn't it. You know, so how did she know? Yeah. I want to know. I want to know what are they gonna do now that uh, Equestria Twilight and Crystal Prep Twilight have now met? <laughs> Probably nothing. All I can, all I can, all I can see is like Flash Sentry over here, and is Flash Sentry uh, looking at the two, looking at the two, or and maybe possibly fainting, or he gets a perverted grin and he's like. Flash Century approves of this experiment. What I wonder is, is the uh, Equestria Ghost Twilight going to come through and find this Flash Century of the Pony World? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it, would be, it, would be, it would essentially uh, be the equivalent of, hey, this is an alternate Twilight who's being shipped with the ponies. Flash Century. He's not the same guy. Even though the first movie made uh, implications that they would act the same, considering like how the main six was. But mm -hmm. still, Pony Flash Century is a different character. He could be the gateway to all the human pony ships. But um. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I I guess we need since we're going to be doing another reaction after this, we need to be wrapping this up. So, oh, totally. um, what are your all final thought, like predictions or thoughts of like going into the rest of this season? Mm. This will be the year of Spike the Dragon, and I am totally okay with this. Also, <laughs> hoping for um, Spike to become an ambassador of sorts, considering that one, he's making good connections with the dragons, and two, he might be able to make good connections with the changelings. Hmm. Food for thought. Mm -hmm. All right, Jen, do you have any predictions or thoughts for the next, rest of the season? Uh, let's see. Predictions? I I don't have any predictions, but I do have hopes. Um, I do have hopes. I hope we see just one more little bit of our future equestrian overlord. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Flurry Heart. <laughs> we'll see one more bit of Flurry Heart. Um, doesn't even matter what the scene is. Just one more bit of her. Um, let's see. Anything else? Nope. I can't. Nope. I can't. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> I I, re I really I really can't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Flurry uh, Heart rules uh, all. Is it? <laughs> All right, John. Well, I predict that uh, some episodes are going to be my all-time favorites, especially the Dungeon and Dragons one and the Convention one. Uh, apart from that, I don't really have too many predictions or too many hopes, so I'll just leave it there. All right, and um, just like I feel, we're, um, as for me, I feel we're going to get two or three surprise, like sort of um, episode one hundred. Um, slice of life like episodes which are going to be very popular fan extravaganzas one of which i think is going to be dungeons and discords um yes. so i feel like we have that to look forward to and also the really possibility of sunset returning which really does make me happy on the downside like i sort of mini ranted on is i really wish there would be another dedicated flourish episode this season and not just a uh not just a Split dual tag in this episode, like map episode, like every other character is going to be getting. So I really hope I'm wrong and that every little thing she does is a Fluttershy episode. 
Like at this point, I don't care if it'll be a bad flush episode. I would just want another episode just to sort of even it out. And, um, and that's the Fluttershy fan for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I mean, just look at like every other of the main six is going to at least get sort of two episodes where they're at least a supporting like dual tag and sort of like split the role. She only had pretty much it's going to be a map episode and um, her brother with the, her episode, her flutter brother, which were she had a very, um, that's what I'm looking for deadbeat brother <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. yeah like spike gets to meet like a, his new waifu and we find a changeling uh rainbow dash joins the wonderbolts uh twilight stranger student to become like her sort of successor or something and fluttershy is introduced to her deadbeat brother that no one likes <laughs> yay <laughs> I bet everybody, uh, I, bet everybody uh, I, I bet lots of people who are watching Flutter Brother Flutter Brother would be like, oh man, I know it's someone who is exactly like that. Uh oh, and by the way, who's to say the changeling won't become another one of Spike's waifu sooner or later? Oh my gosh. Seriously, I've been hearing some <laughs> things about people I guarantee thinking the changeling is a girl. I don't oh think my it's gosh. a girl. But at the same time, I guarantee you there's already a ship of it. <laughs> Ah uh, yeah. Probably 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 the 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 uh the amber one is already is already underway. Well, I mean right. like the amber one is kind of going up against the garble amber one. Like seriously. Who the hell does that? No! That's actually good art is a draw art of that. And I'm just like, oh my god, why? How could you how could you? Why would you punish the poor? Why would you punish the poor dragon girl with that garble of all dragons? <laughs> no. All right, I need a I need a bell because I need to do a shame bell reference right now. Shame. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Um, like whoever Wait. does this uh, Ember garble thing, all I have to say is shame, 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 shame. 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 All right. With that said, I guess we'll meet you all actually next week because that's when the season kicks back off. And also a uh, reaction episode that's going to be recorded right after this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Ciao, Good night, Bellas. Everyone. Good See night, y'all. every pony. <laughs>